Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 4 on the Drivers of Reactions. This is video number 16. We're going to pull apart some of the things that we've looked at previously and just put them together in a little comparison table so that we can specifically look at the relationship between spontaneity and entropy and specifically how that affects the Gibbs free energy value. So here's a table that gives us a bit of an idea about how we are going to categorize our uh, reactions. Of course, we need to keep in mind that we're looking at change in Gibbs free energy being equal to the change in enthalpy minus the temperature multiplied by the change in entropy. So for this mathematical equation, there's a couple of important things that we need to be aware of. In the first case, the delta H value is going to be negative. And if the delta H value is negative, so let's just call this uh, case one, then the, the value here is negative, And we're going to be looking at multiplying um, a uh, number by another uh, positive value. So that's going to be a negative minus a negative. So this is always going to be a negative value. And so therefore, these ones, uh, because the delta G is always negative, they must be always spontaneous. If I jump down to um, the bottom one, then what I have is a value here where the delta H is positive, And I have uh, a, a delta T uh, that T minus uh, delta S, which is multiplying by a um, negative value, which is going to make this whole thing positive. So this is going to have to be a positive. And therefore, if the delta G is always positive, then this, these sorts of reactions can only be non-spontaneous. So... We know that exothermic reactions release energy. That released energy um, can actually uh, create additional energy for the system to continue to react. So that's a nice thing to happen in a spontaneous way. Also, increasing entropy increases the level of disorder, which is the natural flow of things in the universe. And so that also tends to be something that favours uh, spontaneous reactions. So the reverse of each of those tells us that we would not have a spontaneous reaction. But what if we have a combination of the two? So let's look at number three now. For number three, we have a negative delta H value. So the first value here will be negative. Uh, but then we're going to have a value that's going to also be a negative. So when we multiply these together, we're going to have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So in this case, we're going to have a negative value uh, plus a positive value. Now, what's obviously important here is if this positive part here is less than the magnitude of the negative, then we're still going to have a spontaneous reaction. And one of the ways to ensure that it is, is to ensure that this component is very small. So low temperatures are favoured for us to make sure that our delta G remains low. And therefore, our reaction will be spontaneous. The reverse logic, I guess, is what we need to apply for our final situation. In this case, we have an endothermic reaction, so our delta H value is already positive. And so then we're multiplying it by a value that is multiplied by a positive value. Um, so this is again okay, but it means that this, this part of the expression this time now needs to be larger in magnitude because it's going to end up with a negative. So we're going to have a positive um, minus a negative value. So as long as the magnitude of this is now large enough to ensure that we have a negative value, then we're going to have a spontaneous reaction. So therefore, the T delta S has to be large. And one of the ways for that to happen is to ensure that the temperature is very high. So for the delta G again to be um, negative, for delta G negative is negative, um, 
then we have to have dt delta s being greater in magnitude than the delta h value. Um, this is one way of trying to help um, you make a quick comparison of each of the different types of situations that we can encounter as we look at each of these different uh, reaction systems to try and identify whether or not they're endothermic and exothermic, uh, exothermic in terms of their enthalpy change and also whether or not they're increasing or decreasing in entropy. Mathematically, we'll have a look at some more examples in the next video as to how you put these values in and, and do this, uh, make your conclusions. Thanks for watching.